Welcome back. This is Patty Bennett with pattystamps.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I am excited to show you some tips for using this sheltering tree stamp set from the Stampin' Up! 2015 Occasions Catalog. I had blogged this set of four cards before and I had some questions about how I got the multi-colors on the stamps, um, on the leaves for the tree, so I just thought I would show you how I did that. So these two in particular, you can see that there are multi-colors on the leaves in the tree, and I wanted to show you that. So in this stamp set, the tree trunk and branches and the leaves are two separate stamps. I have them mounted separately here on two of my clear Stampin' Up! blocks. And I am going to be stamping on my Stampin' Pierce mat today because this is um, a photopolymer set and it is recommended to have that extra cushion. And the reason is because all you're dealing with is a piece of rubber here. On a regular wooden mounted rubber stamp you have that extra cushion behind here. So without that these stamps really do work better with that cushion. So that's the reason why it is recommended and you do get a much better image. I'm going to stamp the tree and the trunk in soft suede for these examples. I'm just going to do three of them across here just to show you three examples of how you might want to stamp this. And then I'm going to show you a fun tip that I just saw from our leadership conference and it is really cool. You're going to want to see this. Alrighty, so for the spring image I started out by using the Blushing Bride ink pad for my image of the leaves and I inked that and then I just set it down and I took a couple of pink markers you could use one or two colors it doesn't matter I used Melon Mambo and Rose Red and I like to use the brush tip and I just sort of haphazardly colored in some of those leaves just to add some dimension a little more towards the bottom because you're probably going to have some darker looking leaves down towards the bottom of any tree just because of shadows and the sunlight hitting the top a little bit more than the bottom Okay, so just a few. It's just random. And then because some of that Blushing Bride ink may have dried a bit, I'm just going to breathe like I'm trying to fog up a window. And then stamp that and just give it a nice little push and straight up. And there you have the dark and the light pink leaves. Very easy. Okay, next we will do the fall example. So very similar for the fall example I inked the whole thing in crushed curry and then I used Tangelo Twist which is an in color, Cajun Craze and Tangerine Tango. And again just sort of without too much regard to where the actual leaves are I'm just adding some color. My tangelo is the lightest so I did more of those up towards the top. And then with the tangerine twist a little bit more and then the Cajun craze I'll put more of these towards the bottom. Mix in a little bit up there. And just like we did with the first one I'm going to like I'm trying to fog up a window and stamp and just give that straight down straight up pressure and you have beautiful fall leaves. Isn't that nice? Really easy isn't it? Okay now I'm going to show you a super fun trick that I just saw at the leadership conference. So for this last fun sample 
I am going to mount this so that the solid side of the rubber is going to get stamped instead of the leaves. So I am going to put this down upside down on my table, press my clear block onto it and lift up. So now I actually have that smooth side. You can see that it's all shiny and that's what I'm going to use to stamp. And this is the fun idea that we saw at Leadership. This is Pear Pizzazz ink. So now we're going to ink up the solid side so you can see that the whole thing has the green ink on it. And I'm actually going to stamp off some of this so that it's not super dark. But that is going to give me an outline. It kind of reminds me of um, how a child kind of draws a tree with a big, you know, poofy outline. Now I'm just going to clean this real quick and remount it the other way. Okay, so I'm just mounting it the correct way now so that the leaves are facing up. The leaves are going to get inked, and I'm inking in the same pair of pizzazz. And then stamp right on top of that blob. <laughs> and now you have a green tree that has just a little different look than the individual leaves. So isn't that a fun, different way to use this stamp? I just thought that was terrific. I loved seeing that idea demonstrated. Alrighty. Hope that gives you some ideas for using this great sheltering tree stamp. And you can see here that you don't even have to stamp any leaves. I just put some rhinestones on that one because I wanted it to look sort of like a snowy scene. And if you want to make a valentine, you can simply add some little hearts to your tree. Isn't that sweet? And did you know that these adorable little itty bitty accent epoxy stickers are perfect for lining up on top of the little hearts? So I just like to put them on top of some of the hearts and I think that's just adorable. Isn't this cute? And you can color these with your blend abilities or you can leave them plain. Oh my goodness, I just think that is adorable. Aren't those fun? So just another quick way to make a different type of sheltering tree card design. Have fun with your sheltering tree set.